Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week we are taking a trip to the beach and I have my four standard brushes that I'm going to use today, like I use in most of my classes, which comes with a square wash brush, a medium sized pointed sable brush, and then two small a detail brushes. I'm going to get those in the water cup off the side of the screen here. The colors that I have for today's background step, I have black and white, some ultramarine blue, I have a warm burnt sienna type brown, uh, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of cadmium orange as well. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that I use and recommend, check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, jumping right on in. Gonna grab my large square brush here. We're gonna work a little bit on our background uh, here from the top down. And what I'm going to do first is create a horizon line. I like to do this in a lot of my paintings just to get started and really just kind of pulls you into the painting here. Uh, we're gonna go about a little bit further than halfway down and create as straight of a line as we can all the way across our canvas, just like so. And we can adjust this. We'll have a few opportunities to slightly adjust things and try to get that horizon line as straight as possible. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my yellow here, just working in my sunset sky. And I'm going to start pulling that yellow up from the horizon into the sky. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and I actually want to take this yellow to white. We're not going to blend it into the blue of our sky up here. We're gonna have blue to white, yellow to white and that's gonna keep things from turning green. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about color theory, I do have a course on color theory on Skillshare and I have a link as well in the description box below for you guys if you'd like a month for free so you can actually check out that course for free. But we are going to avoid green today rather than mixing it. And I'm going to mix up a beautiful sky blue. And I'm going to go across the top here with blue. I have a clean brush. And I'm going to pull that down almost all the way into my yellow, but not quite all the way. Working on our gradation today. Gonna grab a little bit of white on a clean brush and blend that up into the blue. Now we'll have this beautiful gradation of blue into yellow without creating green. Okay, just Touching up the sides a little bit so my water in my paint is pooling slightly. Always have a little bit of water in that paint to help it go nice and smooth, soak into the canvas texture. All right, that's looking pretty good. I like it. Okay, so now we have this bottom 40% or so. I'm going to mix up. I think I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush. Let's grab our medium sized brush. And I'm going to mix up a sand color, so a beige. So I'm going to start with my warm burnt sienna brown. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and a fair amount of white. And here's our sand color. And we're going to go, I can see that's a little bit crooked, but I'm going to straighten that in just a minute. We're going to go mm, just like a strip down here and we're going to do our sand line here where the water ends. So now we'll have this section as well. Rinsing my brush again. I'm going to mix up an ocean color. I'm going to do just like a darker blue, maybe bring like a pinch of yellow in or a little bit of green. 
just a tiny bit, just so that it gets nice and oceany. And in this strip above it, we're gonna fill that in with a stripe of blue. Any color ocean you want, really. You can even pull in a phalo green here if you want that nice turquoise watercolor. But since we are on the west coast here in our imaginations today, which is where I grew up, I grew up in Santa Barbara, so this is very Santa Barbara. <laughs> Classic, that's actually where the, the Beach Boys had a house. So this is a Beach Boys kind of painting today. So we're gonna do a Santa Barbara blue. A little bit of green to it. A little bit of gray sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna bring my ocean all the way down to my sand. And in my imagination here, we're parked at the beach. We can see the ocean in the distance, but maybe we don't see necessarily any waves crashing because there's sand in between our vantage point and the water. Okay, so this is sort of like the water further out. Okay, and I think I'll add a little bit of a variation in there. Just a few swipes of a slightly lighter color. Very subtle. Okay, looking good. And then I'll grab my beige again with a clean brush and I'm going to now separate where the sand is, leaving a strip here at the bottom for our parking lot. And we're going to fill this strip in with beige, working our way from the top down. Filling it in as we go. Looking good. I think I'm gonna need a little bit more of this color so that I can get a nice clean line here into my blue. Of course, my car is going to mostly cover this anyway though. So I'm not gonna work too hard on that. And you can see a little bit of the yellow and the beige blend with that blue. It really wants to turn green, but I'm trying to avoid that today. Okay, a little bit of asphalt color now for our final section of white canvas. I'm just going to mix a gray, just black and white together, but more on the dark side. I've got a primo parking spot for a beach sunset. And just gonna get the rest of the canvas all filled in. And we should have no white canvas left after this step. Make sure you got that paint soaked into the canvas texture. These lines, like the horizon line needs to be straight, but I feel like the other ones if they're a little bit wonky, that's fine because it's sand, right? The sand can kind of move and maybe it's tumbling down in certain parts. And same idea with it where it meets the blue. It could be like sand piles, right? So natural shapes. We don't need to worry so much with these ones about it being super straight, but the horizon line would be as straight as we can get it. All right, so final part of our background here. Let's make a little bit of a yellow orange. Okay, so just yellow and orange together for our beautiful sun. And I'm gonna do a big old sun that's way bigger than the sun actually is, just so we get a little bit of kind of like a stylized feel. And I'm gonna have it coming only a little bit here off the side. It's gonna creep it into our photograph in my imagination. That's what's fun about paintings is, unlike photographs, you get to call the shots. 
You get to make your son extra big if you want to. Okay. And just trying to keep things nice and clean. And get that all filled in with a beautiful yellow orange. Looking good. Getting a little bit of blending orange and blue are opposites each other on the color wheel. So when you mix them together, they turn sort of brownish. We don't necessarily want that on our horizon. So we try to avoid that, but we can always touch things up a little bit later or even right now with a little bit of blue. See how clean I can get that where that meets. Perfect. All right, that looks great. Let's go ahead and step away and we're gonna let this layer dry and we'll come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and fresh colors on the piece of palette paper here. So I have some black and white as well as some ultramarine blue, some orange and a little bit of a red. I rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush here. Feel free to use your smallest if you would prefer, because we're gonna be jumping right in to the focal point of the painting, which is the bus, of course. And I think I'm gonna start with the fender of the bus so that I don't end up uh, going off the canvas here, because I wanna see the bottom part, because I wanna see my cute little uh, license plate with the word love on it later. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a slightly curved line here, which is going to be the fender. And then I'm going to do a little curved line right on top of it, and then a parallel line to that first line. And this is like sketching, and like sketching, you can bring the line further out and then rather than erasing, we're gonna fill that section in later. So you can sort of adjust things as needed. And what I like to do is always start a little bit smaller than I think I'm gonna end up. That way I can make it a little bit bigger as I adjust. All right, and let's see, I think I'll now do this second line here, which is going to be almost perpendicular to these horizon lines here. So straight up here a little bit until I am up into the sky. And then I'm going to straighten out a little bit and curve. So we're making sort of like a curved rectangle. And then I'm gonna go across the top, but I happen to end in my white up here, so you can't really see it, but I'm ending right about there. Okay, and this top part here is going to be where our windows are. So it's gonna be kind of like the center line right here. And let's do, yeah, let's do the windows now, kind of blocking this out, however, seems the most logical. I wanna kind of center things, and then that's gonna be like where the windows meet. So the windshield is in two separate little parts here. And there's actually like some body of the car. And then I'm going to do somewhat curved ever so slightly or slanted rather, just a little bit up like this. Meep. Little angle. And then I'm gonna go right along the sort of rectangular, but with a curved shape here. And that's hard to see, so just for the sake of you guys at home, I'm gonna grab a little bit of gray so you can see where the line ends. But you don't have to do yours in gray. You can just do yours in white but otherwise it's hard to see. So a little bit of space 
in between the windows and the outside edge of the car and a little bit of space in between each other. Looking good. All right, and then a little bit more white again. And this center line here, that's gonna be right about where my license plate is. So I'm gonna do two little curved lines on either side there to block out where I'm gonna have my license plate. And then I'm gonna go pretty much right from where that license plate meets the car. And I'm gonna come curve up here, both sides. So mirror image of each other on either side. And again, we can kind of adjust things as we need to. Looks a little better. And then right dead center, I'm gonna have a big emblem. That's where my peace sign is gonna go. I'm blocking out all the shapes right now. And then in these sections, I'll have headlights. And then cute little reflectors that just give, I think the bus a lot of personality. And then right underneath those headlights is where your tires will go. And you're just gonna do two little curved lines like so, and then a flat line where the tire meets the road. And then this guy's gonna be coming off the canvas a little bit from the side. And there we have our basic bus shape. Also a little reflector. Gonna go from right around the bottom part of the mirror and do like a little kind of egg shape guy like so. Look at how cute that's looking. All right, promising shape. Let's go ahead and fill in our sections now. And you can use either your smaller brush, medium to small brush or medium sized brush. And you can pick whatever colors you like with this step. So it's your imaginary VWS. So you get to pick the colors. Today I picked red and white. It was a toss up though, uh, between doing teal and white, because you guys know how I love my teal color. But I decided to go red as a redhead. Just felt like that's my color. <laughs> I love all bright colors though, as you guys can probably tell from the tutorials on this channel. <laughs> I am no, uh, no one that is afraid of color, that's for sure. Um, for this first layer here, actually I'm just gonna go ahead and cover that for now, because it's a decal, so it's gonna go on top, but good to help us block out the space and just kind of remember where that shape is. just by filling it in in a certain way, keeping the brush strokes in the direction of the shape. Remember every brush stroke matters. Nice and smooth. Okay. And we're gonna fill this whole top sort of B section in with white or whatever your top of your bus color is gonna be. And bringing that up and around. And across, very cute bus. The other side, like so. So cute. And I'll have a matching mirror. If you need more control, go ahead and just downgrade brush sizes to a smaller brush, especially for these smaller sections, but I think I'll keep him for now. This brush. And I'm gonna go just with bright fire engine red. And this may need 
multiple coats or a little bit of touching up later and that is just fine. And I'll go ahead and cover these headlights for now as well. We'll find them again later. But that helped us block out our shape and we'll remember that they're right above our tires. Nice clean line there. Oh my gosh, so cute. I've always liked these buses, but I've never been a VW owner because despite their cuteness, I've heard that they break down a lot. <laughs> but I understand the appeal of a little camper van, so fun, love camping. And I do think these buses are very cute. All right. And I can see a little bit of my background there, which is why I might need to do another coat in a bit, but that's okay. We're just blocking out our shapes and getting that base color on for now. All right, rinsing my brush and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my windshield sections. And I'm gonna use a blue gray for that. Sort of like the reflection of the sky. So I'm gonna mix blue with black and white till I come up with a nice neutral sort of like jean, blue jean color. I'm gonna take that into my two front windows. Again, feel free to use a smaller brush if you need a little bit more control in these smaller sections. I really am a fan of this size brush. You go very gently with it, push very gently. And you get a very fine line but then if you push harder, you can get things filled in quickly. <laughs> nice. Nice neutral color there. Goes nicely with our ocean and sky. And I think for this side, I will go ahead and downgrade to my slightly smaller brush just so I can get a nice clean line where it touches my white. Oops. Touched it with my hand slightly. <laughs> I'll see if I have enough. Get this all filled in. I think I'll make it do. And trying to get that yellow from behind all covered up. And then sneaking through. You're afraid to get up close and personal with your canvas for these smaller details. Okay, and a little bit straighter line here. Okay. Looking good. And just a few more sections here with our base colors going to take a light gray just black and white together easy peasy and fill our silver bumper in with that color right across base colors for now. And 
and then just some black for our tires underneath. Very cute. And a nice little main shape here. We're going to be straightening out all of our different sections here, different elements as we fill in. Okay. And I think I'm going to just grab a little bit more white, even just for this first coat, and make sure that it's all nicely filled in as best as I can. So I can see a lot of my background is still acrylic paint. It's all about layering. More layers, oftentimes, the better particularly when you're trying to get that nice opacity, little see-through. And usually a couple coats does it. Okay. And now that we have our base colors and our shapes, we're gonna leave it alone for a minute. And I'm gonna work back with my background with a few final touches. So right underneath my sun, I'm gonna have a little bit of reflection there in the water. And I'm gonna grab white to do that first, lay it down with white, and then I'll take orange and put that right on top of the white. a little bit of extra opacity there. A subtle step, but I think adds a little something, something. Okay, and I'm gonna also do a quick palm tree with black. So I'm gonna come from off the side here, and I'm gonna bring a curved line about there, and then the palm fronds we're going to come from the top and go in every direction like a crazy hairdo. However many you think looks good for yours. And then you can use your smaller brush, teeny tiny, if you want to. But I'm gonna stick with this one. And we're gonna do little brush strokes coming from those crazy hairdo guys from either side. And they're all gonna be pointing downwards, all curved, all coming downwards. A little bit on one side, a little bit on the other. A little bit of a fuzzy texture on the canvas is fine. It's better to have that than to go back and keep adding I'm trying to get a nice clean line and then ending up with a too thick situation there. So it's something that's done quickly and with a light hand. Okay, cute. Looking cute. All right, and I'm gonna thicken up this line a little bit. And just make it nice and clean. If you're gonna place your hand out on the painting like I'm doing, make sure you don't have paint on your hand and that you're not setting your hand into any paint like I just did earlier. Looking good. Look at how that just turned into an instant tropical paradise. All right, I'm going to come back to the bus now. And I'm going to grab 
my medium sized pointed brush again and do a quick second layer here in my red. And as you can see, that nice second layer is getting the coverage that we want. And the white is looking good and all my other sections are looking pretty good. So I don't think they need a second coat, but red is not that opaque really. And I didn't want to make it pink, so. Ooh, and I got a little bit there in my gray. So I'm gonna cover that just real quick. I am a creature of details, creature of habit with my attention to detail. <laughs> And let me get this other section filled in. In drips. But luckily, it's not much. I should probably be using a slightly smaller brush for this. But I just get such nice, smooth paint lines with this guy. Okay, much better. I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush again. Make sure he's clean. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of a medium gray. go a little bit darker okay and I'm gonna go right across the top here with a nice clean outline take your time with this step We're going for that poster illustration look. So a nice so solid outline. I like outlines, I use them a lot. Particularly with the things in the foreground. Okay. So it was just kind of around the white part. And also a little bit around our mirror. Okay, very cute. Loving how this is coming together. I'm gonna take a darker color now. Darker gray. And outline my front two windows. This is also an opportunity to sort of finesse things, if you will. Straighten things out slightly. Adjust your shape. A lot of things I find that I'm doing sort of subconsciously when it comes to straightening out each shape. I do that a lot with these outlines and my filling in and everything. Every time you go into a section, it's an opportunity to finesse it. Okay. Very nice. Let's go here to the bottom part now. Might need to go even a pinch darker. And I'm going to outline my bumper. I'm gonna take, go right along the top part as well. I'm 
Nice. Pull the red in a little bit. Correct as you go. A little bit of black now for the tires. I'm gonna sort of outline those guys. Second little coat of black here. And then I'm gonna do a few back and forth lines where the rubber meets the road. It's gonna come from behind as well, a little bit of shadow of the car parked there. Okay. And same idea over on this side, keeping all those lines horizontal, allowing there to be a little bit of scruffiness in the texture. And I think I'll go ahead and outline, separate this little section right there with the sand as well, but I'm not going to touch that area with an outline. I'm going to let that be a little bit more sort of fantasy realism. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of white now. I'm gonna add a couple quick horizontal or uh, diagonal lines here in the windshield. Front windows. A little bit of reflection. Okay, and a little bit of light gray. Same, actually let's use even the smallest brush here. And I'll do a few brush strokes sort of accentuating the curves here and giving it a little bit of sort of painterly feel and just sort of some interest in these areas. A little bit of shadow. Bringing that through the white little area there. And with that same little brush, I'm going to come in and do my peace sign again, right dead center. And that was a pretty good circle, if I do say so myself. Sometimes I like to use something circular in my home and just do a quick little trace around it. There's no cheating, there's no teacher. Well, I guess I'm a teacher, but I'm telling you, you can do that. <laughs> Straight down the middle there. And a little peace sign, so cute. Such an important detail, if you ask me. I'm just thickening up the outside a little bit, trying to make it as even as I can. Always starting a little bit thinner or smaller. Okay, looking really cute home stretch here. We're gonna add our headlights here in just a minute, but I wanna let my red dry. So I'm gonna give this another few minutes. I'm gonna come back and add the final details. I'll see you guys in another couple minutes. Okay, so we have a dry mid layer here. I'm gonna just come in here with my second to smallest detail brush and get my headlights added back onto this red area. Just gonna fill those in with white. And remember they're right above our tires. Just like so. My red is a tiny bit wet still. Taking a very long time to dry. 
patient. But usually when it's even 80% dry, it's okay to add another layer right on top. And then I have my cute little reflector guy. That's going to be right above the headlight. I'm going to fill that in with white for now as well. Okay, then I'm going to come in with a little bit of dark gray again. Pretty dark with this final color here, final shadow. I'm going to go around my headlights. I'm going to do a quick little shadow mark in the headlight as well. All the way around. And a little shadow mark over here as well. So cute. With that same dark gray, I'm going to add these sort of like attacher things. <laughs> Car people are screaming internally right now with knowing the proper term. Attacher things. I'm, presumably they attach the bumper here to the body of the car, but I do not know the term. A little bit of white for a nice shine in our bumper. So cute. And then I'm going to just outline my little red sections with some black. This is my final little touch here. Nice and clean lines. And I'll probably end up doing even one more coat of red. Because I can still see through my paint a little bit. But then I have everything sort of blocked out. Very nice. A little bit more black on my tires for some tread. And then my final touch will just be a little bit more red. But you may not need that. So feel free to put any final touches that you might need on your painting. If you painted along today, I've created a Facebook group called the Art Club that's designed for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me on one of my videos or just from your own imagination. I'd love to see your work over in the art club. There's a link below in the description box as well to join. Can't wait to see your work. It's my favorite part of my day to see what you guys are painting. All right, pretty cute if you ask me. Oh, and I almost forgot to take a little bit of orange right into my cute little reflector guy. I'm going to leave a little white on the outside edge and I'm going to circle that with that dark gray as well for my final little touch. Okay. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the art club and don't forget to check out Color Theory 101 on Skillshare and you can use that link for a free month and check out a lot of other good stuff on Skillshare too. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So thanks for painting along and until next time, stay creative.